If you know nothing about stats, this is the place to start. You don't need any prior knowledge. I'll teach you everything you need to know. Well, at least everything I think you need to know. In any case, we'll make it easy. The first thing you need to know is that stats isn't about numbers. I know most people think that statistics is just another name for math. They think it is all about numbers and formulas and looking things up in tables. What's worse is that stats is often taught that way. In many classes, the emphasis is either on theorems and proofs or on calculating the right answer. But if all you learn is how to proof a formula or crunch some numbers, you can easily be replaced by a computer. Computers are great for doing calculations. They are a lot faster and more accurate than we are. So if that's all you learn, there's no lasting value in taking the class. I want to give you something more than that. I want you to learn how to think statistics. Because statistics isn't really about numbers. It's about thinking. It's deciding what to study, how to study it, how to analyze the data, and how to interpret the results. Stats is only a component of the scientific method, and that's how it's best viewed, in context. So let me show you how statistics fits in as a part of research. We'll develop a theory, design a study, collect the data, and use stats to analyze it. We'll go through it step by step. We'll start at square one and explain everything in detail. You don't need any special math skills. We'll pretend we have a supercomputer to do all the heavy lifting. We just need to know which button to push and why. We'll assume you don't know anything about statistics. You're intelligent, but you're not a math person. You don't spend a lot of time with numbers, and you've never taken a statistics class in your life. Or if you have, you hated it. In other words, you're ready to start at square one. Square one is the thinking square. It's where we create a theory. We start with theory building because in research, everything you do depends on your theory. You've probably studied other people's theories, and the idea of making up a theory might sound like a lot of work, but a theory is just a collection of ideas, and you certainly have lots of those. You've got ideas about people, are they good or bad, how old they should be when they get married, how do you make friends, how do you help people who are poor. You've got lots of ideas. You probably have some strong views about the world, politics, education, and what makes people tick. These opinions and views, and the assumptions underlying them, compose your worldview. In research, we'd say it was your theory. Worldview, theory, same thing. It's a collection of ideas. In technical terms, an idea that is part of a theory is called a construct, because you use it to construct a theory. Construction is a great description of how theories are formed. Theories don't drop from the sky, they are built, sometimes well, sometimes poorly, but they are formed, composed, compiled, constructed, and generated. Theories are clusters of ideas. Sometimes the clusters are very carefully put together. Every individual idea is examined and considered. But most of our personal theories are more thrown together. In our informal theories, constructs are often tossed in haphazardly. Square one is when you have lots of ideas but no plan of attack. You have a theory about how government should be run, but you haven't got any further than that. You have a theory about intelligence, but haven't tested anyone. You have a theory of education, but it's all in your head. You haven't tried to apply it to real life. At square one, you have a theory, or are building one. Let's assume it's a casual theory about intelligence. It's not very formal or well-formed, but it's a place to start. You have some ideas about what makes people smart. You're thinking what might cause intelligence. So now, you're ready for square two.